Welcome back to Ubad's lab and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to calculate the impulse of a rocket engine. Alright, so I thought this would be a useful video to make for you guys uh, and also just for me because I'm going to be uh, doing a lot of engine and rocket fuel testing uh, in this channel and uh, calculating the impulse for these different uh, rocket engines is going to be important to be able to compare the different fuels that I use and the different changes that I make. Um, so uh, the data that we're going to be getting from doing this these rocket engine testing is going to be the thrust. So the way that I'm going to be ha having it set up is just with a scale and uh, and the nozzle of the engine sitting. Uh, so the engine sits on the scale, the nozzle pointing up. Um, and then we just look at the different um, weights that come from the scale uh, uh, and just looking back at the footage. Uh, but there's better ways to do it, uh, such as like setting up an Arduino or Raspberry Pi that would just automatically uh, graph out the thrust versus time graph for us. And that's definitely something I want to do for the future. Um, but for now, let's just say that we have our data. So let's, let's get our graph of thrust. In newtons versus time in seconds and um, let's say the graph looks something like this this is a, a good approximation of what a thrust versus time graph would kind of look like kind of levels out at the end um, and we want to find the impulse um, so before we do that let me just put some uh, numbers on here so we can actually do some calculating since that's the best way to get something down is to actually do it. So let's say, let's say over here at one second we have uh, a thrust of two. At two seconds we have a thrust of four. At three, thrust of six. And then at, um, there we go, thrust of six. Then at four seconds, we also have a thrust of four. And then at five seconds, we have a thrust of one. Okay. Um, and uh, now we want to find the uh, impulse. So uh, the um, impulse is equal to the integral of the force with respect to time. So that's something important to understand. And with this graph plotted, um, we can make it easier for us. So since we don't have the, um, the, uh, the actual function for uh, our thrust versus time, we can't just go ahead and integrate it that way. We have to be using our graph right here. And we're going to be looking at the area under the curve because that's what the integral of, of a curve is. It's the area underneath it. So um, since we don't have the function, we're going to be looking to use a Riemann sum, which is plotting different uh, rectangles uh, of heights to approximate the area underneath. Um, so it won't be exact. It's going to be an approximation, but it should still work out. So we're going to be using a left Riemann sum. So the, the, the left corners of the rectangles are what's going to be touching the corner, the, the curve. So it's our first rectangle, our second rectangle. So you see the left corner is touching our second point. There's, boom, the left corner touches that point. And the left corner touches that point. There we go, to six seconds. OK, yep. All right, it's looking good. So um, let's get into calculating this. Let's say we want to find the integral of, of f dt from one second to um, six seconds. So to find that that impulse from one second to uh, six seconds, or huh? Let's just do yeah. 
Okay, yeah, it looks good. Uh, it's equal to our, our, that's equal to our impulse. Just again, to restate that, um, from one to six. Um, and that's approximately going to be equal to the areas of each of these um, rectangles. So we have uh, rectangle one, rectangle two, rectangle three, rectangle four, rectangle five. I'm going to add all those areas together and we'll get our impulse. So uh, the area of rectangle one was going to be equal to uh, the base, which is one second, times the height, which is two, uh, two newtons, plus uh, for the second one, each is going to be one second base, and then with the height of four, plus one times six, since this is the third one, plus one times four, and then, yup, and then last one is going to have a one, so plus one times one. Okay. Uh, and if we add these together, 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus uh, 4 again plus 1. So uh, adding these together, we get uh, 10 and 11. So we have 11 plus 6, and we get 17 for our impulse. Um, let me just double check that. Six, uh, 16, yep, 17. 17 is your impulse. So yeah, so this is uh, this is what I'm going to be doing in lots of my videos to find the impulse. Um, and yeah, it's a nice way of doing it using uh, left Riemann sum.